What's up there SEO pros? If you need help with SEO, you've come to the right place. Uh, today we're going to be doing some Q&As. I'm going to be giving you guys a few hints and tricks for your SEO in 2017. I'm going to give you a few updates and I'm also going to uh, give some feedback to some people who have been uh, pretty helpful to this channel. So um, if you're joining this after, uh, this is actually a live session right now, but if you're joining this after, if you have any uh, questions or things you need answered, make sure you leave a comment. Um, and I will get back uh, to you with a live video response as soon as I can. If not, um, I'll also be uh, able to answer your questions via my website if it's a more private uh, question. Just go to uh, the link in the description uh, or you can just go to chaserender.com and uh, go to my contact form and leave me a message. So without further ado, let's just dive right into it. So I'm going to pull up my comments on YouTube by going to youtube.com. Go to my channel. And we're going to go to, whoops, sorry, uh, subscribers, or we could go to any of these, doesn't really matter. And we'll go to comments. All right. So we have a lot of comments today. I have a, sorry, uh, I have a lot of comments and then I also have a lot of messages and then we're also getting a lot of messages through our like Facebook uh, page and then also our Facebook group. And if you haven't joined the Facebook group yet, make sure you head over to uh, Facebook and type in SEO uh, pros exclusive club um, and the, uh, or just SEO pros chase Reiner and the group should show up um, and just go ahead and ask, uh, ask to join and I will, uh, get you guys in there because I will probably start doing live video in there as well pretty soon. Um, and uh, that's pretty much the update for that. So uh, first question, um, Kevin Lees Etier says, how did it end up with Kevin? Now, I don't know. I don't think this is the Kevin I contacted, but uh, so Kevin was a guy we actually contacted with the cold call outreach and he was actually one of the guys who was actually interested. It was a real estate agent. And I actually didn't hear back from Kevin, but then again, I didn't really follow up for, with with him. So I didn't like uh, try to like continue to call him back and see what was going on. Although a couple other people that I did call, I wound up getting some leads off of and um, one of them actually needed web design. So I'm gonna be outsourcing the web design that they need help with to somebody else. And I'm probably gonna get a referral off of that. So the ROI off of that 40 minute phone call could, it, could be anywhere from like $100 to more. Um, but with Kevin specifically, I didn't follow up with him. There, and like I said before, with the cold call uh, outreach that I did, I didn't necessarily want clients. I was just showing you guys how I've done it. Um, so uh, it wasn't a big deal for me to follow up with him. But I'm sure if I would have followed up with him, I probably would have made at least a little bit more progress than uh, just not checking back in with him. Delicious Themes just came in and said, hey, buddy, glad to be catching you live. This is Madeline from Delicious Themes. Uh, what's up, Madeline? I don't think I've heard of delicious themes yet, but it sounds interesting. Sounds delicious. Uh, Simon Cooper says, when reaching out, is it best to have an email that appears to be from the website owner or is it better to be reached out as myself, the SEO? So this is in terms of the uh, off page link building that I was showing with the automated outreach via pitch box. Um, I think it's better to actually send a message from like your actual domain uh, it depends on what your angle is. So like for instance, if you're going to be reaching out for a company, then it would probably be better to do for that company. Um, but I, I honestly in the past have used my Gmail and, um, got feedback from people who messaged me back saying, why are you reaching out to me from a Gmail? This looks spammy. So, um, it is more helpful to, uh, reach out from, uh, an actual domain, uh, email if you can, if not, um, you know, uh, do definitely do like Gmail or something because at least Gmail is a little bit more legit, but there's so much spam that goes on through Gmail addresses. You kind of want to try to stay away from it. Uh, and then after Simon Cooper says, great info, thanks. And you're welcome. Uh, we got another comment. Uh, Delicious Theme says, I'm wondering what tactics do you have on SEO boosting some old blog posts? I would love to see a video on this subject. Um, so that's actually a really uh, popular thing to do right now. And the person who does it the best is Backlinko. And he actually did a case study on uh, relaunching content. Uh, so if you go to his blog post right here, and I'll, uh, I'll link to this for you. Um, most of his posts that he does, he actually relaunches and he updates them and makes them look like they're brand new posts. And he gets like way higher rankings once he does this because he, he builds new backlinks. He uh, 
he gets more social shares. Um, it's definitely a really uh, overlooked strategy that should be looked at um, in 2017 at least, especially since Google likes to see that your stuff is being updated regularly, uh, which is also why he puts right here last updated. So um, I would definitely look into uh, doing uh, relaunching content if you haven't already, if you have a lot of content that's maybe like a couple years old, um, definitely, even if it's just adding like a couple pictures and then changing the title tag to say updated on this date or something, um, and then even changing the OG data to better represent what you're going for uh, through social, could definitely get a bunch of new traffic and rankings. Also, you don't have to relaunch the content for the same word. You can also relaunch it for new words. So like for instance, if you're, you were going for 2016 before, you could relaunch it for 2017 and try to go for a different keyword. Uh, Christopher Rizme says, how do you handle local SEO with no addresses? So for that, uh, what I do is I just make sure to send the uh, letter to whatever address I'm trying to rank. So for instance, I love this uh, iPhone repair. Uh, this is actually the location I'm in right now. This, this exact garage, this is what's ranking, but it's ranking as a service area. And what I do is I just make sure to hide it from the map. But before I hide it, I just go and get it indexed on a bunch of different local indexing sites. So you still get that NAP consistency without uh, without necessarily showing your address on Google. Next comment we got from social media entrepreneurs saying, where can I find the link for the Facebook tool? And I thought I linked to it. Let me click into here and see. So we'll go to uh, comments or sorry, description. And uh, I, I guess I didn't put it in there. So I will put the uh, link. I have a resource page for all the tools I use on my website. If you guys need any of these tools, I, uh, I'll link to this in the description as well. Uh, one second. I have a lot of blog posts right now. Hold on, hold on. Um, and this tool actually works really well. If you guys want to see how it works, it's pretty cool. I could show you really quick. So uh, one of the things you can do with it is you can wish people happy birthday with this tool. So if I go here, click on it, and then I put um, send birthday wishes, I can message all my friends saying happy birthday. It does it automatically for me. Um, it's doing it right now, actually. So you'll see right here on the side. Um, or actually, you can't see because my face is in the way. Let me move this over so you can see. See that? Um, some other cool things that you can do with it is you can actually go and uh, uh, go to like your page. Let me get the tool really quick. There it is. Here's all the tools. Um, boom. And you can go into these uh, into your newsfeed like this. Uh, go to see pages feed. So these are all the different pages that you liked with your page. Um, so these are all the people who um, I'm following with this specific page. And I can go out and automatically like all these pages with this tool uh, and all the comment the people who are commenting on uh, this page with this button at once. So boom, just liked everything. So you see, I like all these people. So they get notified that I like their stuff, which is pretty cool. Um, there's some other things you can do as well. I won't go into it right now, but a um, bunch of cool stuff you can do with this tool. And if you haven't seen that video yet, make sure you check out the Facebook marketing uh, uh, post I made. Pretty cool. We got another comment from Christopher Rizme saying, I didn't get that, so you don't have to enter the address, just city zip. So you do have to enter the address to get verified, uh, but when they ask you if you want your business shown on the map, you just click, on, I only deliver to customers. You don't click, uh, I serve uh, customers at my location. Uh, Dwayne Squire says, hey Chase, your YouTube images are great. Are you able to share where you get these made? Um, yeah, so uh, I get these on Canva. I just make these on Canva. And it's a pretty much a free image site, uh, image creation site. Uh, Lee Rushton says, hi Chase, uh, Lee here from the UK, happy new year. I know you're a busy man, but I was hoping for a little uh, of your knowledge on lo with local maps. Does it hurt your listing results if you change out the number, uh, phone number and website attached to it? Say if a client does not pay if it's your lead gen listing. And if, there, uh, and if there's say a plumber that there that's listing is best plumber, but my site is best plumber plus city, and that's what I want to call my listing, but Google still rank it as it's nearly the same or are reviews and signals what they look at more. Uh, 
hope you can help sir looking forward to your next videos going forward take care lee so uh so so if you if you're getting your uh, website indexed on a bunch of different local indexing platforms with a certain phone number either it's a name address phone number or website um, you want that to be consistent as possible so say you start getting all those citations built and then you know a couple months down the line you want to change the phone number on your google or you want to change the uh the uh, uh uh, website or whatever it is, um, hours, uh, you you want to make sure that you're updating that on the different uh, local indexing platforms because Google looks at that and, and sees that you're consistent, which builds trust in Google's eyes. So uh, if you are going to be changing your stuff a lot, you want to go something uh, with some sort of data aggregator that will automatically update all your listings for you. And the best one for that, if you're going to be doing like tons of updating constantly, is probably like Yext. It's also the most expensive. If you wanted to go with something where you just manually get your citations built and you don't want to be updating them frequently, the cheapest route would probably either be hiring somebody um, off of like Upwork or Fiverr, make their, sure they're legit, make sure they're not building spammy uh, citations. Um, or you could go to WhiteSpark, uh, it's like a service like WhiteSpark and they'll build your citations for you as well. Um, and in terms of the next question where, and if there's a plumber there that's listing is Best Plumber, but my site is Best Plumber City, uh, that's fine. Um, your your Google My Business name doesn't have to be exactly the same as your title tag, um, which I think is what you're asking. But uh, but you want to try to keep it as similar as possible uh, for at least branding, and then also uh, Google probably will trust your site more if your uh, you know business name is consistent with your business listing on your site. But you can have variations and still uh, rank high. So I hope that answered your question. If you still have any more questions around that, make sure you leave a comment and I will, uh, I'll, I'll try to answer that as soon as I can. Uh, we got another uh, question. Traffetees LTD says, how do you make clients keep paying you? Um, how would you respond when your clients tell you they don't want your service anymore? So for me, I always tell my clients like, look, it's not a big deal if you're not interested in my stuff anymore or, or, or me helping you because I have, you know, all this time I can be spending doing other stuff. So uh, generally people want to stay with me. Um, I have had people in the past cancel on me, not call me back. Uh, they weren't interested anymore. In those scenarios, uh, you honestly just have to pretty much understand that it's not really as much you as it is just them not seeing any value in what you're doing. Um, so if you really want these people to see value, uh, you do want to make sure you're doing certain things like meeting with them when you can updating them with what's going on showing them the analytics that you're improving and overall just showing them what you, that you know what you're doing um, and then not coming off as desperate so i think that's one of the big things that happened for me in the past was i was always coming off as like really desperate like uh, I, I need to keep these clients because if i don't have them i'm not going to make money and the thing is is that there's so many people you can help that if somebody doesn't want your help then go move to the next person i mean there's so many people out there where you can do basic things like literally if you were to watch like five of the local SEO videos that I made and start implementing like half of those things, you could seriously be helping people out with their businesses. It's, that's just how it is. So if they don't see value in that and you're, and, and, and I would look into trying to show more value and I can actually create a, a client reporting uh, video as well, which I think you guys would benefit from. But if you're not showing value and they're not interested, then just move on to the next person or figure out how you can start showing more value to these people. Uh, Craig Anthony says, a wave from Wales. Um, when trying to build your Google plus account, should you concentrate on building your brand Google plus or your personal Google plus as well by building, I mean, joining communities and following people. Uh, so Google plus is like one of those situations where I don't really spend too much time on it. Um, I know for bigger brands, it's probably more important and in certain industries, it's more important. Um, I also, I also with YouTube, I have a personal profile, which is this, and then I have my other pr uh, profile, which is connected to this. Um, and then, I mean, with Google plus, it's kind of one of those things that's slowly dying. Um, and it, it still does work. You can still reach people. I still reach people through it. Um, and Google will probably help. It probably helps, um, send signals to Google as well when people are interacting with your stuff on Google plus, but I would not weigh too heavily into it. Um, and like I said, I mean, that's not really my, my situation. I have somebody who's a friend who spends a lot of time on Google plus and she has like, I think like 200,000 followers. Um, I might even get like her to come on live and have her talk about it because like I said, I don't spend that much time on Google plus. 
So I can't really help you out there um, unless you're talking about in terms of your local business. Um, it, you do want to make sure that you are doing certain things for your Google My Business uh, profile, like making sure you have all your uh, bio complete or sorry, they took out your bio, but all of your photos completed with correct uh, image URLs. Um, all the things that you're going to need, like category listings, uh, uh, name, address, phone number, all that stuff. Um, but in terms of brand, I honestly, I just, I just share after I'm done with my posts on YouTube. And then I used to do circle scope to automate things, but that's really buggy now. And so I don't really even worry about it. Um, okay. JJJ says, how many citations do you normally build per month? And that depends on the client. Um, you can build all of your hundred citations or even more in a month. Um, and that would be fine. Uh, I mean, honestly, for me, I usually get like 30 to 40 citations at a time and see how that goes. Uh, and it also depends on where the citations are being built from, whether they're hyper local, whether they're, uh, uh, generic, that sort of deal. But, um, most clients I work with usually have like around 30 to 60 citations already. Um, and then the competition usually has under a hundred. So I try to get them up to where the competition is at about a hundred. And, and then from there, like I'll also be, uh, doing other things on the way, like on page signals on the site, um, doing, uh, 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 keyword research and optimizing for keywords via heading tags and title tags, um, interlinking, uh, review generation, all that stuff. And usually with the citations, all that stuff together, um, you don't have to do as many citations as maybe if you were just to only do citations. So um, I try to just try to uh, uh, get results as fast as possible with everything instead of just working on one thing. Ron, it says, where's Matt Cutts? He's with Tupac and Elvis. Kyle Arnold says, hey, I have a question. In Google Search Console, if you have multiple websites that are linking to each other on the same Search Console account, will Google think you are trying to create a PBN and penalize you? Hold on, let me read that again. Uh, if Google Search Console, in Google Search Console, if you have multiple websites that are linking to each other on the same Search Console account, will Google think you're trying to create a PBN and penalize you? Um, I don't know why it would pick that up through Search Console, but not through the, the just the website. So uh, let me continue reading this. Uh, that's not what I'm trying to do. I'm helping out a company that has a few websites which link out to one another, and I was wondering if it is okay to add them all to Search Console account. Thanks to keep up the great work. So many hours to watch. Um, so I wouldn't worry about it unless it's like 50 websites all linking to each other. Um, that sounds a little sketchy, but if it's like three or four websites, I, I, I mean, I'm doing it right now. I've done it in the past. It, I would not worry about it. Um, JJ says, Kyle Arnold, that really depends how you're linking them together. It is a, it's really a terrible idea to link all your websites together if they are in the same hosting as this is what Google looks for when trying to find PBN links and suspect links. Depends what anchors you're using and if you're linking all the sites or just doing it in such a way uh, where there is one link from each uh, site to a top tier site. Hard to explain, but as a rule, it's not a great idea to link them together unless you know what you're doing. Yeah, so I mean, if there's like 30 websites all linking to each other, then that's probably going to look really bad. But I mean, if it's like three or four websites linking to each other, I don't think you're going to get a uh, penalization. I mean, Google looks at more of like the really big uh, PBNs that are going on, like like people who have 30 different PBNs linking to one site. So, I uh, yeah. Uh, Video base just said just signed up to get some citations from White Spark, so I'm looking forward to seeing the results. They want to do local niches in Ireland, though. Uh, sad face. Sounds fine to me. What, what's what's the problem with that video base? Also, um, I'm going to start asking for likes on these videos. If you guys haven't liked this video already, please give it a thumbs up. It's going to help me reach more people and share more of my advice. So if you haven't done already, please give me a thumbs up. We're going to keep going with these comments. So Austin says, uh, Chase, do another cold call video. That'd be so awesome. And all of you guys have been asking me to do these cold calls. I, I'm going to have to do it. I just have to do it for you guys. I, I just need a better script. That's what, that's really what it's going to come down to. I just need to have a script. We might even do some A and B testing with what script works better, but I will probably do that in the future. I've just been busy with so many other things and I really don't need clients. So I don't want to be getting more clients through this stuff, but I could tell them after, Hey, look, I was just doing a video. Uh, and then maybe even take those clients and outsource them to you guys. Uh, Chet just said, yes, cold call. <laughs> uh, if you guys want me to cold call, press one. If you want me to do a uh, uh, client reporting, press two as my, one of my next videos. 
Irv DaCosta says, thanks, thank for getting back to me. That's unique. And this gets me hooked, so I'm going to listen to your stuff regularly. Keep it up. I am in. By the way, Erve is how you say my name. Oh, not Irv. <laughs> Erve is how you say my name. Thanks for trying. I am in the Bex. I am the next big thing after Tony Robbins. This stuff is so exciting. So Erve is the next big thing after Tony Robbins. If you guys want to check him out, make sure you go check out his channel. Uh Looks interesting. Cool. Um, I love anybody, anybody who's in the motivational speaking industry. So we got one person saying cold calling. Um, and the chat just also said, uh, uh, yes, cold call. So for, uh, or sorry, he said, uh, how did the cold call going? So for the cold calling, I said it in the beginning, but basically I got um, a couple people calling me back. One person actually needs web design instead because they do need SEO, but they need web design first. And so I'm going to be outsourcing that to somebody else and probably getting some sort of referral between 100, maybe up dollars off of that. So that's pretty much a free referral that I got. Um, and then, and then uh, I got a couple other people interested, but I never followed up with them because I don't need the leads. So um, for that situation, they kind of just dropped off um, because I didn't follow up with them. So um, if I do uh, actually do another one of these, if any of you guys are looking for more clients, I might be able to just hand you one of the clients if you guys are interested. Also for the mentorship that I'm doing, I'm probably going to start handing the person I'm mentoring clients because, um, or having them work with me on clients because, uh, cause like I said, one of the reasons I'm doing the mentorship is so that I can start having somebody help me that I can outsource to that. That's why I'm, one of the reasons why I want to train them. Um, so we got some ones, we got some twos. Looks like the ones, twos and are equal. Christopher says one, two, and three. <laughs> Jinx says I need nine more subs. Okay, no, don't give him those subs. He's he's just desperate. <laughs> Christopher says, how would someone go about ranking in areas without an address? Um, so I just explained this a little a uh, little bit ago. Uh, basically, what you would do is just uh, try to rank as a service area, which is a lot harder. But I, I, I've honestly been able to do it with all of my businesses. This is a service area. All my other businesses are service areas. Um, you just want to make sure your, uh, your your SEO is extra strong when you're doing service areas because when you have local actual business locations, you you get uh, way stronger signals sent to Google. All right. Christopher uh, Cor Corley says, Hi, Chase. Have you got any outreach templates I can uh, use pretty, uh, please? So I don't really have as many uh, actually like uh, uh, outreach templates, but I have SEO packages you can use. Um, I'll give you the link to that right here. So if you guys want to start... Um, uh, Structuring your SEO packages for people and selling uh, packages of hours. You can use any of these here. Uh, where is it? Um, and literally, it's just a template right here. And I also have a slideshow that you guys can use as well in this post. Uh, where if you want to um, just send them like some uh, PDF of, of, uh, in, of uh, well, it's for local SEO. But if you want to show them a PDF for local SEO like this. And, uh, and like what to expect from the local SEO, you can send them this. It's free on my website. So I'll do that. Um, we got a couple more uh, comments. Uh, we says, uh, Chet says giveaway idea, LOL. Ron, it says cold call and cold email. Lauren Noble says pick me. <laughs> What's up, Lauren? Um, Video base says, can you change to a service area after setting up your listing? Um, you can. So what I do is you can actually just start out with a service area by hiding your address. But if you, um, if you leave it as an actual address for a second for like literally like maybe like a day and get it indexed on Moz or whatever, uh, API data aggregator you want to connect to, it'll distribute and then you can switch it back to a service area and still get all those citations built automatically. I mean, of course you have to pay, but it's a great way to do it. That's how I've done it in the past. Christopher Rismay says, does Google want to mail you? Google, does Google, doesn't Google want to mail? Yeah, so so when you set up your address, they do have to send you a, a verification letter, whether you're going to be shown on the map or whether you're not. Praise Rain God says, hey, I would like to enter. I do SEO for a month now and I love doing it, but it feels like I'm stuck. So this opportunity would really help me. Um, Okay, so yeah, um, we're actually still trying to figure out the structure of how we're going to be doing the drawing, but it looks like I still have 
uh, 13 more days to figure that out. I probably will be making a post in the Facebook group. If you guys haven't joined the Facebook group yet, just head over to facebook.com, type in SEO exclusive, uh, SEO pros exclusive with Chase Reiner and uh, ask to join, I'll let you guys in. Is I am gonna be serving the group, asking them how they actually want me to uh, be picking the winner. I think we're gonna have a vote. Um, Andrew Recheck uh, in the group saying, Chase, have you heard of Google penalizing a website's theme whereby Google won't allow the site to rank ever again? Um, I mean, that's actually called a manual penalty. I haven't heard of it happening off of a theme, like maybe a WordPress theme, but I have definitely heard of manual penalties. Um, so uh, yeah, hopefully that answers your question. Luke Charles says, just wondering, I noticed your Yoast is free, uh, is the free version. If I saw that correctly, is it worth upgrading to provide uh, or does the free version do everything you really need SEO wise? So I haven't experimented with the pro version. I've only done the free version because it's everything that I need. Um, I think in the pro version, you can actually start editing your social data, but it's really limited. And I use SSO pro instead because you can start embedding videos in your posts. And what that looks like is uh, instead of you're just sharing a picture, you're actually sharing a video on social media. So if I click on this, and Yoast doesn't let you do this, and I click on share on Facebook, you'll see this is actually a, a video that I'm sharing, which is way more valuable than uh, than sharing like just a picture in my opinion, especially since everything's digital these days. And it's also share, or sorry, uh, visual, and uh, especially since it's sharing uh, the video as well as the post to the website. So you get like a double whammy. And anybody who likes the post as well, doesn't just go to uh, YouTube, or actually it doesn't go to YouTube, but it goes to your actual post through your API and it'll increase your uh, your social signals on your website, which is pretty cool. Um, Ron, it's asking me, is local GMB uh, SEO dying? I wouldn't say so. I feel like uh, the stuff that I've been doing has been is really working very well. Um, this is literally right here, iPhone repair, um, a business that I'm just ranking and renting right now. Um, and I was literally able to do it in under like two months. So, uh, you know, you, if you can rank and rent right now still, then you can definitely uh, think about doing local SEO for like actual, um, uh, you know, functioning businesses that have been around for a while. Also this moving company, I was able to rank them in like uh, on number two in like under, uh, I think a month and a half. And then uh, this person right here, in all of these video videos, I show you guys exactly how I do this, how I work with the clients. Sorry, I can never spell acupuncturist, let's go. Uh, oh, she went down one. Let's see, number four. Um, she's fluctuating, but she wasn't even she wasn't even number four before. She was like number twelve or something. Um, and her leads are definitely like going up. She even said that she's noticed that they're pretty much doubled. Um, Luke Charles says, "Oh yeah, sorry, I already read that one." SEO Plymouth and Co says, "Did you know what? Uh, did you know about Inspect in Chrome? Do you, uh, to see what uh, each element is? I use it all the time. Control Shift I." And yeah, I guess maybe I wasn't using that before when I was looking for some sort of element. Um, I Yeah, so I know what that is. Uh, Kevin says, it's really cool that you answered. I'm just going to leave my job to work for myself. So it's the kind of question I'm asking to myself sometimes. So I don't remember what question I answered, but um, I would uh, be careful about just leaving your job um, just to do SEO, especially if you're brand new to it. Um, I mean, that's what I did, but I did it after like three years or two years of doing SEO nonstop and working at like a really big SEO agency where I took the leap and I had money saved. So I'm hoping that that's kind of be uh, the situation that you're in as well, Kevin, where you you, you have a good amount of knowledge um, on this stuff and you're and you, you have some money saved. So you're not just uh, risking everything just by learning brand new because I hear people do this sometimes and it's uh, kind of a, a risky thing to do. It was even risky, very risky for me. So, but, uh, but I do commend the uh, risk that you're willing to take, Kevin. We got some comments, uh, Christopher saying, uh, this is the idea as I don't think I'm clear. Is it bad to build sites for let's say SEO Miami, SEO Tampa or SEO Orlando? And if I'm not there, I won't have an address there so, or so I, uh, can I use my real address? Um, yeah, so if you, you can use your real address if you're in those locations, but you're probably not gonna rank unless you're in those locations with your real address. Uh, you can rank sub pages without having the uh, uh, actual uh, listing and you can you can rank on organic um, but uh, 
but organic's not really one of those things that's gonna matter as much. Also, I kind of uh, don't really recommend trying to rank for SEO and then city because most of the people who are ranking for those things are, um, are being found by other SEOs who are doing competition analysis. So if you're looking at keywords, uh, like for instance, SEO Santa Barbara, which is what I was able to rank number one for before I got hired. Um, it says 880 month or sorry, uh, 90 monthly searches, but all of the people who are searching that are other SEOs. So I would really recommend uh, trying to rank for something else that maybe people are looking for, like web design people are usually uh, looking for uh, uh, web design companies and they then they indirectly also need uh, SEO services. Also, I'd try running a, a AdWords campaign first as I've been seeing that that works really well to get uh, conversions and then you also know what your keywords are that people are going to your stuff for. Um, all right, so uh, next we got Timia Williams saying, when you sent on Snapchat, did it say who it sent on your uh, to on your bank statement? This is a video I made a long time ago on how to send money in Snapchat. And the answer for that, Timia, is that it doesn't show who you sent your payment to on, on, on your bank statement. Uh, Stephen B says, ah, oh, he quoted me. And I think it was because you gave some pretty good feedback, Stephen. Um, can you do a mobile SEO video? Uh, I could, um, I could do that. So for any of you guys who want me to do videos, just leave a comment. Um, you can leave a comment right now too, um, on what, uh, type of videos you'd like to see in the future. Um, because I am looking to, uh, be more helpful for you guys. I do keyword research and a lot of the videos I do, I rank for but I also wanna be helpful in terms of helping you guys and not just do my videos for the search engines. Um, Ronit says, uh, Plumber San Diego, have you checked the map results for this? Uh, no, I haven't, but I think what you're referring to is the, uh, uh, the paid results in the map, right? Yeah, so this is where you'd actually have to pay for the results like this, and not everywhere is gonna get like this. This is only in certain overcrowded locations and you'll see uh, these are the paid results and then these are the actual organic results as well. So Google's still experimenting with this stuff um, and a lot of people are actually getting mad because all the SEO that they paid for, now they have to get, uh, they have to actually pay like SE, uh, SEM prices to get listed in these different uh, uh, results. But this isn't gonna happen everywhere. I don't think it's just happening in like major cities like San Diego, San Francisco and then under certain categories that are extremely competitive. Um, Lauren Noble says there's an insurance company wants to hire me. Uh, what is a, another way to rank them for the Lake Tahoe area if they don't want a blog? So that's really frustrating when people are like, uh, Oh, I want SEO, but I don't want to do any content on my site. I just want it to be like a one page website and have people, everybody find me off of Google. Um, you can still rank these people. Uh, mainly through the actual maps because you don't need to have as much content or on-page signals to rank in the maps. But um, as far as not doing content marketing and ranking organically, uh, that's going to be a little bit harder. It's definitely still doable and there's tons of people who are doing it. For instance, this person right here is ranking with a blog post of bare, you know, maybe a couple of blogs. It's not exactly necessary. Um, you just have to figure out your uh, site architecture layout uh, make sure that you are listing everything that you should be la listing in terms of landing pages, contact pages, about pages, site maps, all of your NAP citations, all that stuff. Um, and then make sure that you still do have a good amount of content on all of your pages that you're trying to get people to land on. Uh, Russ Rigo says, how do I beat the top competitors who are using hidden links, link schemes, PBNs to hold all the one to six spots on page one over uh, three for, for over three years now? My site has 1500 URLs. There's uh, less than 100 URLs. So for those people, how you beat them is you just go and say um, Google report PBNs and you report their uh, websites right here. I'll leave you the link. Um, and Google will actually uh, usually pick these up and give them all manual penalties as well as the PBNs as well, if they really are using PBNs. Um, so that's how I would do it. Uh, Ronit saying Google is working to maximize their AdWords revenue by killing Google My Business SEO. Well, yeah, they're, they're trying to maximize their revenue by doing tons of things. But if, if, if one thing leaves, there's still going to be something else that comes in. Uh, I'm not worried about it. There's still so much opportunity out there in terms of SEM. I mean, search engine marketing is still 
super profitable. And you'll see that the four ads that are now showing up at the top, there's no more sidebar ads. Those are super profitable right now. And I don't know why people aren't using those. Like when I was running those for my ad, uh, for my iPhone repair, I was getting like an, a 9% click through for iPhone repair and getting like a huge ROI off of that. Uh, you'll see right here, uh, where is it? iPhone repair. I'll show you one of the keywords here. We do all time. Uh, so for iPhone repair, Santa Barbara had a 10.2% click through. That is humongous for an AdWords campaign. Um, so you can only imagine what kind of ROI that led to. I mean, I wasn't really doing many iPhone repairs, but I couldn't answer the phone fast enough because so many people were calling me with, uh, with me needing help, them needing help with their iPhones. So this is like this in all the different industries with computer repair, iPhone repair, it's huge. Uh, video base says, I love to see a video related to schema. I really don't know where to start implementing it. So I did a, a beginner schema tutorial right here. Um, if you're wanting to do a schema markup for, uh, for like advanced schema markup, um, I haven't done one of that yet because I don't want to confuse you guys with, uh, with really gnarly schema markup. Um, I can be doing that in the future, but it, it's something where it's like, it really depends on the business and there's so many different types of schema markup that it's hard to just say like, okay, this is a tutorial just for every schema markup. Like you have to do like schema markup for realtors, schema markup for computer repair. Cause there's so many different types that you need to use. And I honestly don't want to specialize in schema because it's pretty elaborate. Um, Ron, it says you should make a video on landing page, reputation management, CRO, AB testing. Yeah. So, uh, for content conversion rate optimization, I've actually been waiting uh, good idea though, uh, for my traffic to get higher traffic, um, sorry, my website to get higher traffic because I actually, uh, uh, don't want to do A and B testing until there's like a good amount of stuff to actually be testing. So we can get a lot of data pretty quickly. My website is getting about 176 visits around 150 visits a day. Um, and this is only after like, I don't know, maybe I started this website a couple, like a month and a half ago. So it is growing pretty fast, but it's still not at the place where A and B testing should be implemented yet. I'm going to, I'm going to wait maybe to about 300 to 400 visits per day. Um, okay. Next questions. Uh, also I'm kidding, saying more stuff on schema. All right. Um, next we have SEO Plymouth saying, I would really like to hear more about increasing conversions. Great work. Don't knock yourself out. That's funny because I actually just said that. Um, gosh, now I'm gonna have to say it again. Actually, I'll, I'll just link to that part where I said I'm gonna. I need to do more. Uh, Christopher Caroli says, "Hey Chase, I'm very interested in learning about uh, CTR, CRO, analytics, and Search Console. Can you point me in the right directions, please?" So yeah, I think I did one for analytics and a little bit for Search Console, but I need to do one for actually uh, Search Console and for. Uh, just the search console for Google and the search console for Bing. Cause those would be uh, some really good tutorials for you guys. Uh, let's see if I can find it. Might be able to find it later. I don't think I posted it here. I think it's on my, uh, that's right. Gosh, this is the problem with making so many tutorials. It's like hard to keep track of them all. Uh, SEO 2017 analytics. There it is. That's for analytics. I'll do a video response for this too, Christopher. All right. Uh, next we got awesome video. Can't wait for part two. I was surprised to see how little preparation it took. I haven't tried cold calling, but I've reached out to potential clients via email. In that case, I uh, try to offer some kind of value up front, like a free audit. Obviously, this is, takes a lot of time, and sometimes only one out of 30 say yes. I should probably try calling instead. Thank you, Chase. Yeah, so email outreach. I told you guys, I think in that video, actually, uh, that it's a lot harder to get people off of email outreach because so many people are spamming email these days. I would much rather go for cold calling. And even today, I went into uh, to a business. I went and got um, uh, some pre-workout before, my, before, my, uh, before I went to the gym. And I started talking to the guy about, um, about his, uh, his, his business. I was like, Hey, how's your business doing? Uh, have you heard of SEO before? And I'm just curious. I don't even need these clients. Like I said, I'm just asking these people how their business is doing and you'll see how fascinated they get 
just by talking to them in person, you could literally just start going into businesses and, and, and start asking them about their stuff. Like, Oh yeah, I was thinking about getting this protein powder. Um, and then when they, when they start talking to you say, Oh, well, how's your business doing? You know, you, you can, you can, you can migrate conversations in here. Um, and like I said before, you just don't really, you, the only thing you really don't want to do is come off as desperate. If you start doing that, uh, people start picking up on that. And then they see that they, that you're not really trying to offer them value. You're just trying to help yourself. Um, and you want to try to show people that you're trying to offer them as much value as possible. Um, yeah. So, uh, Christopher Rizme said, or Lauren Noble says, yes, more on schema start to finish would be rad. Christopher Rizme says, I would like to see that too. I have done it, but isn't there any way to auto load Google reviews in schema there? Uh, they, the way they, it seems now is manually entering it. So you can do, uh, 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 schema markup where you're just automatically generating the uh, schema code through JSON LD on one of the plugins and get aggregate rating in your uh, in your listings, which means the little stars underneath your Google results. But um, it's better to do it on a page by page basis. So like for instance, different products are going to have different amounts of reviews, different services are going to have different amounts of reviews. You don't want to have the same reviews across every page because then you can end up getting in trouble for having all those uh, unnecessary uh, star ratings on your site. Uh, so for instance, you don't want to have review rating on your homepage if it's not if your homepage isn't your service page uh, Ron it says what do you think about site-wide links? Are they good or bad for SEO? Um, and by site-wide uh, Do you mean links that are on every single page like the footer? I don't know what you mean by that uh, Mr. Ekti Ekitase says thank you and you are most welcome sir uh, Ashish says, hi Chase, how do I, how can I earn from page in an organic way? Please suggest. And he's talking about Facebook. Uh, that's all about creating a business plan, creating products, figuring out what your, uh, uh, KPIs are. That's a whole, a huge question that I couldn't just tell you, uh, just how to get paid. And I feel like a lot of videos out there are just like, here's what you have to do to make a thousand dollars in two days. And a lot of that stuff is just people selling an image of like themselves and trying to say that you can do this in two days. I would try to stay away from that stuff. Anything that requires little to no work, you have to wonder why people are giving that away for free. Um, all the things that are going to require a lot of work are usually the things that are going to give you the highest ROIs and also help you the most. So I would really try to stay away from the people who are telling you, um, just do these two simple steps and make you know five thousand dollars in a week. It, it, you don't want to you don't want to listen to those people. Those are that's bad news. You want to stick with the people who are like look, you can do this stuff, but it's going to take a lot of work. <laughs> when you hear that stuff, th that, those are the people that nobody's interested in though, because those people are like, uh, well, I'm not looking to work really hard. I just want to get paid. <laughs> so you need to, you need to look away from the people who are saying it, it's going to be really easy. Um, it can be easy like to a certain degree, but I'll stop rambling. Uh, Brian Knuckles says, hi Chase. Let me know if you want to moderate this Pinterest board. And I actually have an SEO Pinterest board. Um, if you guys want to check it out, I, I do need help with the moderation. I, I'm actually going to need more than one person to help me with this. So if you guys are looking for, uh, for a way to help out, um, I actually, uh, have a board for it with a lot of followers. I think it's like 5,000 followers. Um, and I get tons of spam all the time because there's so many people, uh, who are part of the group on that board that just like post random stuff. So, uh, if you want to help me out with that, um, just go to chasewriter.com, send me a contact, uh, email and, uh, and I, I can add you to the board. How are we all doing, by the way? Are we all doing good? We got 12 watchers right now. If you guys are doing good, press one. If you guys are doing bad, press two. Actually, just press one. You don't have to say if you're doing bad. Um, Christopher Rizme says, what do you think about Becker and OMG? I've checked them out. And like I said, uh, anybody who tells you, so, so some of the things that they say are really good and accurate, but these people who are doing this stuff are usually trying to sell an image. So they're trying to sell like, um, look, I don't want to talk bad about these guys. If you guys want to talk more, uh, in more depth about these guys, uh, you know, uh, with me in my Facebook group or something like that, then I'd be willing to talk about it. But uh, I really don't want to put anybody else down. Um, I would just, like I said, I would just try to stay away from anybody who tells you things are going to be super easy and that they try to sell you an idea. Uh, of something instead of like an actual way of doing, uh, it's kind of hard to explain, but uh, you, you don't want to buy into an image in my opinion. You want to buy more into knowledge. All right, we got a lot of ones. Everybody's doing pretty good. It's awesome. Uh, Jason Witt says, does having a Google map on the business location on website help with SEO? 
Um, so you're talking about like having a sidebar with the actual map. This can be helpful, and it also helps people who are like, uh, you know, uh, looking to find you uh, on your website. Uh, you'll see on my iPhone repair website, I think I actually have the map on there to help people. Right, uh, that's a video right here. Um, some people say it does help. Some people say it doesn't make a difference. Uh, I think if you, as long as you have your um, NAPW consistency on your website, on um, your different pages, uh, like this. I think you'll be okay, especially if it's in local schema markup. If you want to do the map, you can, um, but just make sure anything that you're doing like that is just really for user experience and make sure you're not using bad plugins that's going to bog your website down because there are some maps that, maps that will bog your website down. Um, Craig Anthony, or sorry, I think I missed one. Uh, Nova Fusion says, while renting out a website, could you also use Google AdSense to make more money? You could, but generally local businesses aren't going to be getting that much traffic. Like I, I can show you my Google AdSense uh, from my website, Reliable Computer Help, which is getting, uh, I think on average, uh, like 3,000 clicks a month off of Google, or at least it was. I haven't been working on it in a while. I'll show you guys it uh, right here. So in the last month, it got 592 clicks, and then the last 90 days, they got 2,400. So it's actually not a month. That's like, that's like per three months. Um, and I literally made maybe like a couple dollars off of that. So AdSense on your website, um, I, you would do a lot better from doing like affiliate marketing banners on your website or even selling your own products. Uh, Ron, it's saying, do you also repair computer phones? So I did, like I said, I have this business that's ranking right now number three for computer repair. And I have this business that's ranking number two for iPhone repair. Um, and I've actually rented this one out, but for some reason it's harder to rent out the computer repair. Not as many people, uh, for some reason, want to get engaged in computer repair unless they have their own businesses. Um, so in that case, that can, that's just sitting there. I'm getting leads for it. I'm not even doing anything. I'm just uh, basically not answering the phone. So I had to stop doing that uh, just because I don't want to spend my time doing other things other than SEO. Uh, all right. Uh, Craig Anthony says, excellent videos as always. My question, Chase, is do you suggest adding my personal account to Google Plus communities and posting it in them? Or should I use my brand account or should I be concentrating on both uh, equally? Thanks for showing my clocks in your video. Was glad to see it there. Okay, from UK. Um, so for that question, I think I answered it earlier, so I'm not going to answer it again. But um, uh, I do still really appreciate that clock. It looks awesome. If you guys haven't seen it yet, um, Make sure you check out the other video, the last Q&A where I show his uh, clock. Pretty cool. Um, and when I move into an apartment, which I hope I'm going to be doing soon in the near future, I'm definitely going to put it right behind me so everybody can see it. Uh, NMR says, I'd love a part two to the cold calling or a follow-up to some of the calls from last time. I'm not scared of people in cold calling. I just It's just what to say. Yeah, so there's the people who aren't scared of calling, but they don't know what to say. Then there's the people who are scared of calling and they know what to say, but they just don't say it right, which is me. Um, so I know what to say to people, but I always get hesitant on what to uh, what to say first because I, I feel like I'm on the spot. I, I get that deer in headlights sort of uh, feeling when I talk to people on the phone, especially cold calling. Um, and this is gonna be something I'm gonna be doing in the future. I've been, uh, a lot of people in the comments, you guys right now have been saying you wanna do it, uh, you want me to do it. And then also uh, I've been getting a lot of people asking me to do it. So I will do that soon in the near future. I might even do it live so you guys can see how ridiculous it is live. Um, Sage Harper said he came in late, which is no problem. Um, what are we focused on with questions? Anything, by the way, first time watcher, glad to listen. Uh, right now we're just answering questions. Um, also, I looked at my YouTube analytics. So uh, apparently more than 75% uh, of the people watching my stuff aren't subscribed to me. So if you guys haven't subscribed, I really appreciate it if you did that because uh, if you subscribe on the videos that you're watching, it also helps those rank. So if you can press the subscribe button. Um, also, uh, if you guys haven't done this, if you want to get alerted when I do the videos, um, you just press the little bell icon underneath the uh, video um, and it'll alert you when I'm going live or whenever I'm doing anything. Uh, Christopher Rizme says, do you think a website with an eight second won't... Uh, Eight second probably load time won't rank compared to a crappy site uh, at a three second load time. So yeah, an eight second load time would uh, would just really uh, kill the user experience. And I would say that would probably rank way less than a, 
uh, crappy website with a three second load time just because at least people are going to be able to go to that site i see all kinds of crappy websites ranking but they have fast load times um all right uh i think that's is that pretty much everything oh we got one more no fusion says okay so uh let's say you rank for number one on a high-end niche like health my goal right now is to rent off out pages off my website of sur suburbs in my website like uh for 20 to 300 a month i think you're saying 200 to 300 my problem is i don't know what to say uh or what exactly rent means for a website one i kind of want to passively rent it out instead of actively so i so uh do i just put my email on that site two after I get a client on board and get him to accept the $300 a month, do I just send him a PayPal uh, link and just charge the uh, change the site and put his info on the site? Is there any alternatives or similar products to source CCS? Uh, I don't know what CCS is. I watched his rank and rent webinar. I'm not paying for his BS. <laughs> Four, after every month, do I just send him reminder links and then send him the payment link? Also, what other services uh, that you would recommend that I uh, could research and learn to provide to businesses other than ranking uh, other services um, well that could follow fall under the umbrella of anything um, I mean you could you could do any service you wanted I don't I don't know what to answer for that question but for the um, the question of ranking and renting so I'll show you guys how I did it uh, if you guys uh, I haven't seen this already. Um, this is how I actually go and rank and rent stuff. So, or how I was doing it. Um, I created a bunch of different locations. So you'll see uh, PC locations like this. And I had a person working in each of these locations. So for, of course for Glita, I'm in there too. That's just another landing page. But if we go to like San Luis Obispo, you'll see, uh, well, actually I had somebody else, but I guess I replaced them. Hold on, let me go to Sacramento. Uh, you'll see I have different people that I got off of Craigslist and I was starting a ranking and rent series where I was hiring somebody the guy I, I, I was trying to show you guys I was connecting with um, he just wound up uh, not, not really uh, Corresponding with me after I like quote-unquote hired him So I'd have to go out and do another Craigslist ad and do all this stuff. It's just so much work to do I'd rather just share you guys the concept of it So you don't have to I don't actually have to go and do it because it's just um, it's a lot of work dealing with people uh, but what you do is you put out a, a, an ad on Craigslist, you get somebody in, you put their profile on here, and you put their phone number or whatever uh, contact form like this. Um, you set up a Google My Business location with their address, uh, make it a service area so they don't actually have to show their house, um, and then you start doing some basic SEO on these pages. Um, and this location actually, I think, is ranking. Let's see, Acon Computer Repair. I haven't looked at this in a while. But some of these uh, listings still get uh, 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 leads, and and what I would do is I would just charge them um, beforehand. I would charge them the three hundred dollars, and then if they want to stay on it another month, uh, charge them again for that next month. Get them to pay up front, uh, and also I would start with some search engine marketing ads and also some Craigslist ads if you're going to be doing this stuff to get them uh, started. So yeah, you'll see right here. Uh, second page. I think he used to be on the first page, but I haven't done that. I haven't looked at it in forever. Uh, this is pretty much a zombie site now, but it's still getting a bunch of clicks for stuff. All right. Questions in the comments. You guys are awesome today. You're super active. Um, Sage Harper says, yes, a call script would be nice. Pietro says, got to have a script. And I think Pietro actually gave us a script on one of the other comments. Lauren Noble says, I just got my site to about two seconds from eight. Is a pain in the butt lol yeah that's never fun make sure you guys have really good hosting don't go with godaddy uh sage harper says chase what's your favorite form of backlinking and i would say probably getting automatic guest contributions to a skyscraper post and then sharing it with them and getting them to link to it afterwards uh that would probably be the best way and if you want to see how to do that just go to chasefinder.com slash seo dash 17 and i show you how i was actually able to get uh all of these different reviews or comments uh, all automated I didn't do anything except automate it um, do you work on anchor text diversification no I don't and I don't really care to either not because it's not important but because I feel like that's something that should happen naturally as you naturally build links all right so that's all the comments in the comment section I do want to give some acknowledgments to people so if I go over to messages 
Uh, Lucinda Green says, hi Chase, I sent you $10 to get yourself a coffee. I watched all your videos and you have been a great help. I have subscribed twice and I will send you some more coffee money in the next week or so, thanks a lot. And then apparently Lucinda uh, again said, hi Chase, I sent you $20 in the last couple of days. I heard you say on YouTube that things were rough. I don't remember saying that. Um, I hope things turn around for you, thanks. I do really appreciate the uh, contributions. I do drink a lot of coffee, so that is helpful. Um, and I really do appreciate uh, the contribution you made. Uh, Google or YouTube is actually going to be getting rid of fan funding in the near future. So the only way to actually contribute to somebody's channel via funding is uh, to do a uh, promoted uh, comment on a live stream. So that's not here yet, but that's going to be definitely interesting. Uh, Think John says, uh, "Hi Chase, thanks for recognizing my comment. However, I didn't see any link updates, um, and he was looking for some different tools that I use, and I will just go ahead and leave those in uh, the link right there." Uh, we got some more comments. Uh, Ronit says, do you do guest posts? I don't do guest posts, but I sometimes get people to outsource uh, guest posts uh, via writer access for other sites that I work on. Um, but I don't necessarily do guest posts for other people. I have done guest posts in terms of video marketing on YouTube. Um, and if you guys haven't seen this video out uh, yet, you should check it out, it's pretty cool. I did a, a top five SEO tips. Um, for 2017 on this guy's channel. Whoops, top five SEO tips. And uh, this is like an e-commerce site that I was uh, partnering with. Okay, um, Christopher Rizme says, you ever heard of reverse anchor text? Oh my God, mentioned this in a, as a tease in a webby last night. Uh, reverse anchor text, nope, sounds like uh, Sounds like mumbo jumbo to me. I don't understand why people worry too much about anchor text right now, unless you're uh, doing uh, purposely, purposely building anchor text uh, via external linking uh, to your website, like through paid links, that's kind of bad to do. Uh, the best time of, type of uh, anchor text to build, in my opinion, is internal anchor text via like content marketing or other landing pages. Um, gosh, I can't find this thing. Oh, I remember where it is. Sorry, when I talk, I lose what I'm, I'm thinking about. Okay. Gosh, I'll just get this. I'll just get this later because I can't find it. Oh, there it is. Boom. All right. Uh, we have a couple more questions via Facebook and email. Let me open up my uh, Facebook. And we'll go to the group. SEO exclusive club. And there it is. Whoops, no, it's not. Go to home. There it is. Uh, all right. So, uh, is it possible to do local SEO in multiple cities? And it definitely is. Looks like we already have some other people answering these questions. Bill Slavsky is actually uh, pretty big in SEO. Um, and he's actually uh, agreed to be on the channel, I think, next month, which is going to be cool. You'll see this guy. Um, he's on a lot of podcasts. A lot of people trust him. Rand Fishkin from Moz actually recommends this guy as one of the top uh, people to follow for SEO. Um, so it's pretty cool that he's in this group answering questions for us. Um, and if you do watch this video, Luke Charles, because um, I'm going to post the response for this, uh, make sure you scroll back uh, earlier on because I, I answer uh, how to do uh, the rank and rent. Um, or not just rank and rent, but rank in multiple cities with uh, the site that I was doing before Reliable Computer Help. Uh, so yeah. Uh, Darian Dunstan says, what's the best practice for multiple businesses, uh, business identities at the same address? I'm working for a company that has three different diff uh, websites for different areas of their business, an interesting investing fund, custom luxury homes, and a real estate agency. Will it affect the SERPs if the NAP schema microdata for all the companies are area relatively the same? Um, so as long as they're completely different businesses with different phone numbers, different websites, uh, different names, all that stuff, different citations, you should be fine and you won't get filtered out by the possum update. But if you do have really similar things, like say you have iPhone repair and then you also have like Android repair in the same building, that's going to look really sketchy. You'll probably get one of them filtered out. 
So uh, you'll see right here, uh, Bill Slavsky says, treat each as a unique entity when it comes to schema and try to make sure that a search engine sees them as unique businesses engaging in different types of business. So pretty much what he just said right there. Lauren Noble says, I'm having trouble getting your automation tools. Uh, can I get a link really quick? Never mind, found it. Cool. Um, Aaron Romano says, well, I was supposed to introduce myself and explain a little bit about my background, but it must have slipped my mind. My name is Aaron and I'm from Melbourne, Australia. A couple of years ago, I, uh, I knew it was my destiny to help small businesses. Um, okay, so it looks like he's introducing himself. No questions here. All right, so we got all the questions from the Facebook group. I don't think I have any uh, questions via a uh, Facebook page. So I'm going to get out of here and out of here. And I'm gonna check my emails because I know I have questions there. Um, also at five o'clock, we do have another live stream where I'm going to be helping uh, somebody who wants to get uh, a paid mentorship from me. Um, so I'm gonna be helping out this guy who wants to ask me a bunch of questions about uh, his local SEO and like what, what I can do to help him out. Um, I'm probably only gonna create an outline for this guy. I'm not gonna be able to actually implement any of the SEO for him. But um, it's going to be an interesting show. If uh, you guys want to stick around and watch it after this, um, you're totally free to. Uh, I don't want to keep you around for too long because, uh, you know, we are spending a lot of time on this video. But I'm just letting you guys know that it will be an interesting post and you can always check it out later. Um, okay, so uh, I can actually read the question, I think, as well. He, uh, This is what he sent to me. Uh, I have a... A video production company uh, in NYC and I'm looking to do my own SEO strategy. I'm trying to figure out, should I learn on my own? What do you recommend? Is it easier to talk uh, instead of email? My info is below. So I think it's going to be for a video company as well in New York, which is going to be pretty competitive to rank for. Um, so uh, yeah, it's going to be cool. Uh, next we got uh, uh, one of the updates for tomorrow is we're actually doing the black hat versus white hat podcast episode five and one of the uh there's going to be actually i think a pretty famous uh seo white hat um i think it's going to actually be on this channel or actually no it might be on josh's channel but i probably will do a live stream before end to funnel you guys into that if you're interested to get a reminder um and we're going to be talking about how this uh professional seo is actually able to make a bunch of money with white hat and i think some black hat seo um Lauren Mobile said, uh, Noble said, uh, I'll be there. Awesome. Ronit said, I'll be there too. That's awesome. Um, all right. So uh, next, we got another uh, question saying, hey, Chase, nice YouTube videos. They got you a new lead. I'm, learn I'm in the learning process of SEO. I actually work for my dad and he has put a task in my hand where I must seek help from someone who knows what he's uh, doing like you. I can do most of the work myself, but what you do is amazing. Thank you. First, what's your quote for an SEO audit? And I'm not going to share the website name because I don't know if he wants me to do it live or uh, share what the name is. But if he does, I will do this live. Um, I will say that it is a local business. Second, I have another project I have to launch and I would like to ask if uh, this is a service you can provide. I give you all the business information that uh, you may require and you make a blueprint like the, in the attached so I can Follow uh, to build the website. I got the attached from a Fiverr and it's better than what I can than what I can do, but I'm sure you can add some magic to it. Let me know what you think. Uh, let me know. Thanks ahead. Uh, sincerely name. Um, and this is actually a really cool uh, PDF. Um, so I, I can show you guys this because it doesn't say the website name, um, but you'll see right here. Uh, this is a pretty, pretty awesome you'll see uh, somebody actually made a website layout on Fiverr. And I'm really interested to see how this guy got this, um, but you'll see uh, or how, what, who made this for him, because uh, of course you're going to want to have different layouts for different businesses. Um, and I'm pretty sure this person just copied Uber, Uber's website, but you'll see home about us, fact, contact us. So there's a different hierarchy and he even explains the link silos within this. Um, so if you guys, uh, want me to uh, let you know about uh, this uh, Fiverr uh, content layout once I figure out how he, who he hit up for this, let me know and I will link to that as well for you guys. Um, I think we got a couple more questions. 
uh, we got somebody asking me about social media um, where I don't necessarily spend too much time do, doing social media, um, but somebody wants you to help me with, help them with their social media business. Uh, if you guys uh, do know a lot about social media um, and you are looking to get some extra leads, I don't mind outsourcing some of my leads to you guys. Um, I would just require that you show me a little bit about how good you are um, in the near future so I can outsource it to somebody who's going to be uh, legit. Um, we also got somebody hitting me up off of an app called uh, Slide. I don't know if you guys have heard of it, but this guy found my YouTube channel. Um, he wants me to do a review on it. Um, the only way I'd probably actually do this review is if he did like, let me, uh, I don't know, maybe do a guest contribution on his channel or something. I had to figure that out. Um, not a big deal right now though. Um, and we got one more comment, I think, uh, saying, hey, Chase, uh, so this is regarding the video I made earlier about the uh, audit for um, for the uh, wedding photography website. And uh, Video Base said, hey, Chase, yep, I watched the video. Thanks very much for doing the audit. I'm implement implementing some of the changes now, and I've been working on adding a few more pages to the site to build it up a bit. Like you mentioned, FAQ, service pages, et cetera. I've implemented Google Analytics and regarding site speed, I have yet to add any caching plugins to the site, so I hope that helps. Let me get some water. Uh, regarding editing your videos, I want to discuss that with you and see if you're uh, up for, uh, for making some slight changes to the things. I'd be happy to edit a few videos for you and make you a custom intro for your videos. Um, and then he's saying, do I have a separate camera uh, that I can record with for my videos? And I don't have a separate camera. All I have is this um, actual uh, uh, Logitech camera. Hopefully in the near future, I will have a higher def camera and then also a different background because it is a bit busy, but that's all to come in the future. Uh, so hopefully that answers your question. I think I have a couple more. Um, that might be all I answer for now though. Okay. Oh, actually, sorry, we have one here. Um, thanks a lot for your great videos on YouTube. I'm a big fan of yours. I've watched a lot of your SEO videos, but there are still a lot of things I'm not quite sure about. For example, would you suggest to use all the keywords research tools first before uh, moving to paid versions? Uh, so yeah, if you haven't tried out any keyword tools yet, um, I mean, you can start with the keyword planner just to get an idea on keyword research. If you're doing a lot of keyword research, it would probably be worth it. Like, I think it's worth it to buy keywordtool.io no matter where you're at, um, just because I think it's an awesome tool. I should really get an affiliate link for this so I can give you guys this and get a discount and get, you know, but I, I don't do affiliate marketing right now. Two, should I get to know all the keyword tools that are out there or should I just choose one keyword tool and try to master that? I would try to master keywordtool.io and cross that cross check that with some other keyword research tool like competitive research like either semrush or uh answer the public or something like that that's not competitive research but that helps um three how much money should i uh, be prepared to invest in keyword tools when i am a beginner probably under 100 bucks a month uh maybe even less Four. what kind of companies could benefit from local seo could i do it for example for local barbers yes gyms yes i've done it for gyms uh, singer teachers yes physiotherapists probably i don't know what that is and chiropractors, definitely. Chiropractors really def uh, competitive though. Five, if a small company already has more clients than they can handle, is there even a point to do SEO for them? Uh, well, I mean, it depends on whether they wanna scale or not. A lot of companies that I've actually got that uh, response from are people that don't wanna scale their businesses. They're like, we're already too busy. It's like, okay, we'll scale. Most uh, Some people don't wanna scale though. Uh, for example, a local physiotherapist who already has more clients than he or she can handle, should I do research which companies actually need more clients and subs subsequently would benefit from higher ranking in, on Google? I mean, uh, most companies would not say no to getting more leads. Uh, most companies are going to say no to uh, you because they don't uh, necessarily believe in SEO or they don't believe that what you're trying to sell is something that they actually want. So I, th I feel like that's way more common than people um not needing any more leads. Uh, uh, six, do my clients pay me after I have proven that I have actually managed to rank them higher on Google? Uh, no, if I manage to raise their ranking, how can I prove that this brings them more clients? Um, 
I mean, that's all through conversion tracking, analytics. Uh, you want to make sure that you're showing uh, traffic improvements, lower bounce rates, um, and then use your conversion rate optimization for offline and online conversion tracking. Just start watching the local SEO 2017 complete guide, and I show you how I do all this stuff. Um, it's right there, part one's right there. Uh, but never have them pay you for rankings. Always charge up front and, and never guarantee rankings ever. That's black hat, and it's just not good to do. Six, do my, uh, seven, if I have ever, if I never done local S before, how on earth are companies going to trust that I can actually do it? Well, I mean, you don't want to lie to them. Uh, just start watching these videos. <laughs> Eight, how does the taxation work in the, in this business? Do I pay taxes to the country I live in while doing local SEO? For example, if I live in Thailand and I do local, uh, for companies in the U S do I pay taxes to the, for, uh, to the U S or to Thailand? Uh, I don't know how taxes work in Thailand. Um, so I couldn't really tell you. I know for the U.S. I just work as an independent contractor and I pay that and I and I uh, pay taxes that way. Um, so hopefully those answers were helpful for you. We got another question saying, "Hi Chase, you mentioned in one of your videos that you outsource design. Do you also outsource copywriting? And if so, then which sites are you using to find high quality freelancers?" And I use Writer Access. Uh, I this is a great site. Um, I've tried out Fiverr, but due to low quality, I switched to Upwork, which is better. Um, I'm saying that. I'd prefer to stay away from it, but sometimes the content stock photos and design are just so bad that you need to step in. Uh, thanks again for the videos. I'm trying to go through all of them, but I can't really keep up with you. Regards, Andre. Also, I'm working with this guy on who's one of our subscribers, Brian Knuckles, or one of our SEO pros, and uh, he actually does video breakdowns and writing. So if you want his information, let me know. Um, and he's helping us with all the content breakdowns for uh, for our complete guide to SEO. Um, hope okay, guys. Type in one if you're not falling asleep yet. You're still interested because I I am you know spending a lot of time answering these questions. And if you guys have any questions, make sure you comment. Devin Magnuson says I have crippling desperation. Oh well, I don't know what to say to that. Uh, Christopher Rizme says, why don't you just get a photography stand and backdrop and do your green screen again? So my green screen, which was over here, I don't remember where it was. Um, sorry, I'm not talking into the mic. Uh, there's no place to put the green screen right here. So I don't know how I would do it unless I got some sort of hanger right here. I'm hopefully not gonna be living here much longer. Um, I'm trying to save up to move into like an apartment somewhere. Still not making enough money yet. Um, so. Until then, I'm probably just going to be doing the videos like this. Uh, Devin Ma Magnuson says, is he reading the chat? How do I better YouTuber? How do I be a better YouTuber? Um, I actually have a YouTube SEO series as well. If you want to check that out, if you go to my channel, I go over how to do a bunch of YouTube stuff like uh, this. But I stopped doing those because I've been more focused towards uh, SEO. So we got some ones. You guys are still awake. I'm happy about that. I keep asking you guys this because I want to keep you guys interested. I don't want to. I don't want to lose you guys. Yay! We got a bunch of ones. I use a writer found. Uh, I found a guy I like there and use often. Um, and I think he's talking about. Uh, oh, I think he's talking about writer access. Uh, Sage Harper says, "Get your affiliate links." Too many people listening. Low opportunity cost. Totally true. Something I need to do. I might even just start uh, make a video for how to get affiliate links and then just start doing it there because I know how to do it. I just haven't done it. Um. All right, we got some more questions. Uh, we got a, a question from Joe. He says, uh, hi Chase, I just finished going through all your videos uh, you have provided for free and I'm sorry that I can only say thank you, but it's at least a, a hundred times and possibly more. I was also really impressed when I looked at your about page. I immediately thought this is the person who could give me first class advice on SSL as he is now using it on his site. Google seems to be pushing it, but the pro group is supposed to be only around 35% at the present from what I've seen. Uh, I think he's talking about the uh, pros versus the cons. Whoops. Searching for an answer, answer the results are full of uh, different differ differences and opposites. So I have to take a couple of paracetamols or aspirins by the time I finished. Okay, so he's just asking, is SSL something you should move to these days? I would definitely move over to SSL as soon as possible. I've said this a couple times, but... Um, Google's going to start showing uh, pretty soon here uh, 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 little boxes saying that the site isn't secure in their search results. And you really don't want to have that happen. So 
Um, it's not happening yet, but you want to do that as soon as possible. Okay. Um, and Christopher Rismay wasn't talking about writer access. He was talking about uh, iWriter.com. Uh, Christopher Rismay was also saying that the green screen's a stand. And I do have a stand, but it just doesn't go high up enough, unfortunately. Um, Sage Harper said, how did it get blocked? Um, I'm sorry, I don't remember what we were talking about. Craig Anthony says, my old Google Plus account, oh, sorry, there, here it is. My old Google Plus account was blocked by Google. Does that affect my registered Google My Business accounts as they are set up with the same email address Google Plus blocked me on? I mean, if it's still there, you're probably very lucky. Um, I don't know what the scenario is and why they blocked you, but uh, that's something that I actually haven't really seen yet. So I don't know what to do in that situation. Um, I would definitely try to contact Google and try to get not blocked. Um, or at least try to transfer your uh, your business listing over. We got another question um, uh, saying, Hi Chase, hope you are doing great. I just saw your video yesterday regarding SEO audit and this morning joined your local SEO 2017 session as well. I must say you are doing a great job in helping others to learn. Having said, I would really appreciate if you help me in an SEO audit for my website. Mentioned above like you did in your video. It would really help me and give me a right, uh, give a right direction. Thanks, uh, we'll wait to reply for your feedback. And I don't remember if I answered this in the other one. I don't think I did, but uh, I actually stopped doing uh, free audits. So if you guys want audits now, I, I, unfortunately I do have to um, uh, get paid for those uh, because I don't have the time to do everybody's audits anymore with how many requests I've been getting for those. Um, okay, uh, so I think that's it for that. What are we at right now? We're at like, hold on, let me see where we're at. One second. Um, I might answer a couple questions on Quora just to get those extra uh, people coming in. I think, let's see where we're at. So I've been answering questions on the YouTube channel, not just for subscribers, but a couple on Quora each time. And, and this is actually a, kind of a cool strategy. I think, uh, let's see how many impressions I got for this uh, stats. And you can use this in any industry, really. So 369 extra views, only a couple upvotes, but um, definitely uh, helps drive more traffic for very little effort uh, since we're already answering questions. Uh, so we also got some people saying, um, what's the cheapest method to purchase SSL certs and uh, simple, simple SSL plugin is what Lauren uses, but to get the certs, they're saying Cloudflare. I use uh, WP Engine, so they just give me a free uh, SSL cert on any of my uh, websites that they're hosting. Um, I, I actually don't know the answer for that, so I would listen to these guys. Like, apparently Cloudflare is really good. Uh, so we're gonna go to this. We're just gonna answer a couple more questions and then I have to get ready for that interview, or sorry, the uh, helping that one guy out. So um, let me just answer like two questions. So we'll do swipecore.com uh, quotes SEO. We'll go to tools anytime past 24 hours. How to optimize my YouTube SEO. So this is gonna actually be an easy one. Um, so Backlinko, of course, did a post you can see there, but uh, I actually did a video on how to do YouTube SEO, so I'll probably just link to that. Um, next, uh, is it difficult to build an SEO analyzer tool? Uh, yes, to get a good one. Let's do this one. What are the guidelines need to be followed to write uh, the SEO? So I think for content marketing, um, so for any sort of content marketing, I think I actually did a video for this. Uh, I think I think it's. Uh, I think actually I think I would rather rec recommend the top ranking signals post I made. Uh, for for yeah, right here, I would do that. We'll answer one more question. Uh, and. What are some tips for becoming a good YouTuber? What are the songs? Um, what is the update? What is the new update from Google algorithm in 2017? I did a post for this too. I have so many videos that I've done posts for that I could just give these to. So we'll do rank brain or uh, links no longer win. This is the benefit of having all these videos is you just have responses for these people all the time. So I'll just post that as well. All right. Uh, so like I said, I do have to get ready for that other video that we're going to be doing pretty soon at, I think it's either five or five 30. Uh, make sure you guys stop by for that. If you're interested in seeing it, 
um, it's definitely gonna be interesting uh, and uh, that's pretty much it so I really appreciate you guys uh, for coming by um, commenting and being really engaging in these posts um, and for uh, for all the stuff you guys uh, contribute to this channel um, so yeah uh, hopefully we'll see you in the near future and until then happy SEOing <laughs>